Hi, in this video, we're gonna look at discrete mixtures. Uh, let's just get right into it with an example. I'll show you what I mean by discrete mixture. Uh, let's say that the random variable cap N representing the number of losses for an insurance policy during a given year is modeled with probability 40% by a binomial distribution with parameters M equal eight and P equal 0.25, and with probability 60% by a Poisson distribution with parameter lambda equal four. And let's say that we wanted to determine the expected number of losses uh, for the insurance policy for a given year. So this is exactly the type of situation that I'm, I'm, I mean by a discrete mixture. I would say that cap N right here is a 40%, 60% mixture of a binomial distribution with the given parameters and a Poisson distribution with the given parameter. Uh, so uh, I, I, again, I just peel that out of the, the question. There's a 40% probability that my cap N is a, is a binomial and a 60% probability that the cap N is a Poisson. That's given me the mixture. So the informal solution to this, the way that you would informally uh, 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 calculate the, the value of, of the expected value in this case, is to compute the expected value in each case and then take a weighted average of the values using the percentages that, that, that are defining the mixture, the 40% and the 60%. And this process is called parameter mixing. So for instance, if I, was, if, I knew, if I knew that I had a binomial distribution with parameters M equal eight and P equal 0.25, the expected value of, the, of, of that binomial is the product of the parameters, which is two. On the other hand, if, uh, if I knew that N was Poisson with parameter lambda equal four, the expected value of, of, that is, is, uh, of that distribution is four. And so what I'll do is I'll take a weighted average then to get the, the, the expected value, the total expectation, uh, or the expected value of, this, uh, uh, of the number of losses here. I would take a weighted average between the two and the four using the the 40 percent and 60 percent weights there so i take 40 percent of two and 60 percent of four that's my weighted average uh, for a 3.2 and that would be my answer okay so that's how i would uh, that's how i would actually do this problem if i was given the problem that's what i would do but let me make an observation here a point that that uh when you have mixtures uh mixtures are going to be weighted averages and uh, as we saw in a previous video weighted averages are expected values of a discrete random variable and so let me explain how you would uh, use uh, uh, this, this second problem that, that the weighted averages or expected values of discrete random variable. Uh, so what I would do in this case, and uh, this is the same process that I use every time, is I introduce a new, uh, a new variable, cap i, to be the indicator. So ca define cap i to be the indicator, and it's gonna indicate whether uh, cap n is a binomial or a Poisson distribution. And I'm looking for the expected value, the total expected value. So I'll look at the expected value in each case, depending on what the indicator tells me. So, uh, so I'll set up a, a, a random variable table like this. Uh, of course, it's gonna, uh, the values in the left side of the table are gonna depend on what the cap i values are. So, uh, so I'll append a column of the table uh, to the table, the indicator column, uh, indicating whether I'm in the case that I'm talking about a binomial distribution or, or a Poisson distribution. Uh, I know that 40% of the time I have a binomial distribution and 60% of the time I have a Poisson distribution, so those are my probabilities. And then the expected value of the, uh, of the number of losses, uh, in the case that you're in a binomial distribution, it's two, in the case you're in a Poisson distribution, it's four. And so actually what I'm doing here is, is even when I'm doing this informal solution, I'm using the law of total expectation or the double expectation theorem. I'm taking the expected value, uh, I'm computing the expected value of the number of losses by taking the expected value of the random variable that's in the table there that's defined to be the expected value of cap n given the indicator. And, and of course, when you take the, uh, uh, in red, the, the random variable, if you take the expected value of that random variable, uh, you just get that weighted average that we got before, the 3.2. So mathematically, that's kind of what's going on behind the scenes when you do this informal solution by just taking weighted averages. You know, uh, uh, determine what, uh, what the value of the parameter is in each case and then just take a weighted average. Uh, but, you know, mathematically what you're doing is actually using the law of total expectation in that case. Let's change the problem up a little bit. Instead of taking the expected number of losses uh, for the policy, let's, let's change that up to the uh, probability that the policy experiences exactly three losses during the year. So once again, I'd start the problem off the same way. 
uh, that you know you're talking about a mixture problem here, a discrete mixture, a 40%, 60% mixture here. And and the solution, if I want to calculate the probability that cap n equals three, then I'm going to mix that parameter. Uh, in, in other words, I'm going to compute the probability that cap n equals three in each case, and then I'm going to take a weighted average of those probabilities. So for instance, if it, cap n is a binomial distribution, then the, the probability that cap n equals three, the piece of three value would be a, a h choose three times 0.25 to the cube, to, to the third power times 0.75 to the fifth power. That's just facts with binomial distribution, how to calculate probabilities with that binomial distribution. Uh, on the other hand, if cap n was a Poisson distribution, then the probability that cap n would be three, given that it's a Poisson distribution, is e to the minus lambda times lambda cubed divided by uh, three factorial. I get these values. And then the, the, the total probability that cap n equals three would just be a weighted average of these two values uh, using the 40%, 60% mixture. Uh, so that's what, uh, that's what you would get, uh, this 0.2 uh, final answer. But once again, let me make an observation that mixtures are weighted averages. Weighted averages are just expected values of discrete random variables. So let's talk about how would, uh, mathematically, what's going on behind the scenes here. Uh, so uh, again, I would define cap I to be the indicator, indicating whether you're uh, talking about, whether you're in the situation of using a binomial or, or, bi or, or Poisson. The parameter that I'm trying to uh, calculate here is the probability that cap n equals three. So I'll set up a table where I'm calculating the probability that cap n equals three, given, given the indication of whether I'm using a binomial or a Poisson random variable. Uh, again, those probabilities that I'm uh, uh, dealing with a binomial Poisson or 0.4 and 0.6 respectively. And then I go through the calculations for these probabilities the exact same way that I did before in, in the previous slide. And then the, the total probability that cap n equals three then is the expected value of this random variable. So the probability that cap n equals three is the expected value of the random variable that I have listed there of course, that's just the sum product. You're going to get the same answer that we did before. This is exactly the law of total probability. So, uh, so that's, that's exactly what uh, is meant by the law of total probability. You're taking the expected value of uh, the probability that the, that, that the probability that you seek uh, given the indicator, uh, which is itself a random variable that, that's shown in the table. So let's go back. I, I, wanna, I wanna illustrate again that uh, uh, the law of total probability is just an, an application of, uh, of a total expectation. Um, and so let's look at uh, the example that I did when I uh, talked about the law of total probability. This is the exact example that I had here. Uh, I had two factories supply light bulbs to the market. Uh, factory X uh, has, 99, uh, ha has bulbs that last longer than 5,000 hours in 99% of the cases. Factory Y has uh, bulbs that last longer than 5,000 hours in 95% of the cases. Factory X supplies 60% of the bulbs. Factory Y supplies 40% of the bulbs. Let's calculate the probability that, uh, that you just randomly choose a bulb. You, you don't know whether it came from Factory X or Captain y, Factory Y. You just randomly choose a bulb. What's the probability that that bulb's lasting them longer than, than 5,000 hours? So let's define some, uh, some uh, symbols here. So let's let Cap I be the indicator indicating whether the bulb is from Cap Factory X or Factory Y. And let's let Cap L be the event that the bulb lasts longer than 5,000 hours. And so I can set up a, a, a table then uh, uh, of what's the probability that the bulb lasts longer than 5,000 hours get it, given the indication is that the bulb is from factory X or factory Y and, and what are the probabilities that the bulbs are from factory X and factory Y. So I'll just peel off all the information in the, in the problem in, in this way, uh, you know, uh, compile it all in that table, and then the total probability uh, that the bulb lasts longer than, than 5,000 hour, 5, hours is just the expected value of this random variable. It's the sum product here. And when I take the sum product, I'll get the 0.974, which is exactly what I got uh, when I did this problem uh, previously in the law of total probability uh, video. Okay, let me make uh, uh, some other observations. Not all parameters can be mixed. So which parameters can be mixed? Any probability can be mixed. You got a probability, uh, you know, that cap N is greater than zero, or probability cap X is less than 1,000, things like that. If you're in a mixture problem, any probabilities can be mixed. Any moments can be mixed. The warning here is that variances cannot be mixed. And so what I mean by that is that the variance of a random variable is not equal to uh, the expected value of what you would have for the variance of the random variable given that you have been indicated in which case, in, in which uh, 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 type 
situation you're in. So uh, the variance will not be equal to the expected value of the variance of cap x given cap y. Now, what I do know is that the variance is always equal to the second moment minus the square of the first moment, and I know always that the, uh, uh, the first moment can be mixed and the second moment can be mixed. Let me explain exactly, you know, let me, let me explain why the variance can't be mixed. If you look at this last equation, the second moment there, the first term on the right-hand side of the last equation is the second moment. I can mix those uh, uh, moments can be mixed. And look what's in parentheses there on, uh, I'll highlight the second term there. What's in parentheses is the expectation of x. It can be mixed, but because I'm squaring it, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's throwing everything off. This, because the, the first moment is being squared, that is what is uh, disallowing me to mix variances. That's what, that's the reason that you're not able to mix variances is it because that first moment, which can be mixed, but then it's squaring and then, you know, you're not going to be able to mix the square of uh, the, the first moment. Okay, so let's look at one more example. Let's uh, say I got an insurance policy. It's going to re this is a very common type problem, by the way, on, on uh, actuarial exams, not just the P exam, but when you get into the uh, short-term actuarial math stuff, this is going to be a very common type problem. Uh, we've got an insurance policy that's going to uh, reimburse only one claim for a, a random policyholder. There's a 20% probability that there's no loss, so the claim amount is going to be zero. And, but then if the loss does occur, so that's with 80% probability, the claim amount is going to be uh, normally distributed with a mean of 1,000 and standard deviation of 400. And we want to know, well, what's the variance of the claim amount uh, in the next year? So again, I, I made a, make a comment, cap C is going to be representing the claim amount. It's a 20%, 80% mixture. 20% of the time cap C is zero, and 80% of the time uh, cap C is following a normal distribution with those, those parameters. Uh, and, and again, I keep in mind, I cannot mix variances. So I'm asked to calculate the variance, but I know I can't mix variance. I can mix the second moment and the first moment. So let's look at what the first and second moments would be for the, for the case that the, the, the claim is zero. The first moment expected value is zero, zero. Second moment expected value is zero squared is zero. But in the uh, case that you're dealing with the normal distribution, the first moment is, is of course, the mean. It's 1,000. And then the second moment is, uh, I re I've written this as 400 squared plus plus uh, 1,000 squared. The, the way I got that is uh, that the second, moment, you, the second moment is the variance plus the square of the first moment. Remember, the variance is the second moment minus the square of the first moment. So when you solve that equation for the second moment, you'll get the second moment is the variance plus the square of the, the first moment. And so that's where the, uh, the 400 squared is the variance of cap x, and the, um, of course, 1,000 squared is the square of the mean. And if you'll go through the arithmetic, you'll get this 1.16 million number. And so now when I, uh, I, I again, I seek, to, I seek the value of the variance, but uh, I can't mix the variance, so I have to uh, go through the process of, of, of mixing the first moment and the second moment. So the, mix, the, the mixture of the first moment, so the mixtures of 0 and 1,000, 20%, 80% mixture of 0 and 1,000, respectively, you get 800. And mixing the second moments is a 20%, 80% mixture of uh, 0 and 1.1 million, respectively. And uh, you'll get there a uh, 928,000 when you do that. And then, of course, the variance is going to be the, uh, uh, the second moment minus the square of the first moment. So I get a variance for the, for the claim amount here to be the 288,000 number. Okay, finally, let me do one more example. That, uh, this is an SOA example. Uh, so an insurance policy will reimburse only one claim uh, per year for a random place. In fact, everything is exactly the same. I just changed in the last, the last sentence. Uh, so I still have a 20%, 80% mixture of a, uh, of, of a claim amount being zero versus a claim amount being uh, normally distributed with a mean of 1,000 and a, and a variance of 400 squared or standard deviation of 400. This time I want to calculate the median claim amount um, in the next year for uh, for a random policyholder. So again, uh, let me just get you caught up. I, the cap C is is the 20%, 80% mixture, just like before. But this time, I'm looking for the medium, me, median. So I'm I'm looking for the value of M for which this probability that the that the the, the claim amount is less than or equal to M is 0.5. I'm looking. What is the prob, What is the value of M for which this this claim amount is is 0.5? But again, as a mixture then, I look at what this probability is in each of the cases. So if, if the claim amount is zero, then the probability that the claim amount is less than or equal to M is one. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, 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 
uh, assuming here, and, and you can look at the answer choices and see that the M is going to be bigger than zero. So um, the median for this random variable is going to be a positive value. So if the, uh, the cap C value is zero, then the probability that cap C, which is zero, is less than or equal to M, that probability would be 0.1. I'm sorry, would be, would be one, is guaranteed to be less than M. That probability would be one. On the other hand, uh, again, I look at the, the different case. Uh, what if uh, I'm in the case of uh, the normal distribution? So if cap C is equal to cap X, then the probability that cap C is less than or equal to, cap, uh, less than or equal to M would just be the probability that the normal distribution, uh, that, that, stand, that, I'm sorry, that, uh, that, that normal distribution cap X is less than or equal to M. And to calculate a probability that a normal distribution is less than or equal to some value, you have to standardize it. You do so by subtracting the mean and dividing by the standard deviation on both sides. So that's standardizing. And so therefore, the probability that cap C is less than or equal to, uh, to M would be a mixture between uh, the probability, well, one, uh, and the probability in green. It's a 20%, 80% mixture of the value that's in red and the value that's in green. Uh, so I, I'm taking a weighted average of those, of those probabilities. And so now I want that value to be equal to 0.5 because M, remember, is the median. The, the other thing I'm doing here, uh, I, I should mention, is if you look at the green, the last expression in green, I'm using cap Z as the standard normal distribution. So um, it, the top, top expression in, in green, uh, on the left-hand side of the, of the less than or equal to, I have uh, the cap X minus mu divided by sigma. Well, cap X is, is, is uh, uh, normal with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, so that standardizes. So the, the bottom one is just the standard normal distribution cap Z. Uh, so again, I want this probability, because, because M is the median, I want this probability to be equal to a 0.5. So at this point, I'm going to solve for... Uh, what I have highlighted in red, I solve for that, and I would solve for that by subtracting 0.2 from both sides and then dividing both sides by 0.8. That would give me a 0.3 divided by 0.8, which is 3 eighths, as that probability uh, in red at the bottom left. The probability in red at the bottom left is, is uh, 0.375. In other words, since cap Z is the standard normal distribution, I'm looking for the 37.5 percentile of the standard normal distribution. At this point, um, if you need if you need extra help going, or, you know, you need to re refresh yourself on the standard normal distribution. Go look at that video. But at this point, uh, I'm looking for the 37.5 percentile of the standard normal distribution. I'm gonna leave it to you. It's not. Uh, you know, it's not in the scope of this video. I'm not going to go over that again. Uh, but the 37.5 percentile of the standard normal distribution is about a 0.32. I'm sorry, a negative. It's about a negative 0.32. And so that tells me that the M minus 1,000 divided by 400 is equal to an uh, approximately, approximately a negative 0 0.32. And when I solve for M, then I get 872 is my answer for that. Okay, so that does it for uh, discrete mixtures, and actually in the next video, I'm going to look at uh, some continuous mixtures. A lot of what I did in the discrete mixture, uh, uh, I did, especially with the, the double expectation, law of expectation things, a lot of that was what I, I did that to make the next video a little bit easier, the next video on continuous mixtures. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.